weeks ago, he asked me to bring up my multimeter stuff. I, I gave everybody a uh, little lesson last year about how to use a multimeter. It's a handy tool, and uh, everybody's, everybody has, in the 21st century, everybody ought to have one in their house. Okay? You can buy, you can spend any amount of money. I don't know, the little brown one you saw downstairs that we're using for thermals are 25 bucks at Lowe's. They work great. They even got a temperature. All right, this little deal here is demonstrating. Well, well, John's taking a little picture of it here. Yes. You've got a little current created by this battery. This is created by Blake Layton. Brad's son built this for a science project. So when you've got a little current, you put cu current through copper wire that's wrapped like that, and it's going to create a magnetic field in that wire. But the and wire has to be wrapped, huh? It has to be wrapped, and it has to be the plastic. It's got a real thin insulation coat on it. So when there's a transformer wrapped, it's got it's got a, a an enamel around it to keep it from uh, from uh, making contact, so that the wire isn't short together. Mm. Okay. And so what happens is you get a current built up in, in that piece of that wrap of coil, and it makes a magnetic field, and then it goes to the opposite with the little round donut magnet. At some point, it's pushing or pulling at all times, and that makes that thing have perpetual motion as long as I'm pushing current through there. But this thing will get pretty warm after a while. You have to kind of watch it. Oh, really? But that's that's yep. a resistance. That's how we transfer electricity to to uh, mechanical uh, electric current into mechanical force. That's I'm going to show you how to use and the differences between all three types of meters here in a minute. And we're going to measure some batteries and we're going to measure some solar panels. We're going to play around with some solar panels. This is a, a ranging multimeter, okay, where you set the range. You look at it and go, okay, I think I got 200 volts or I want to test 20 volts. I've got a, a one and a half volt battery. I don't know if it's any good. I might have a, have a multimeter in the house, or I might have bought one, they're dirt cheap, okay, you can get them online for a few bucks. Or you can get those ones we got outside with the temperature meter, but they're, they're 25 bucks at Lowe's. Okay, so you'd set the range here, and you'd set it on uh, DC, you've got the industry standards, is aligned with the dots on earth for direct current. For sine wave is voltage, like that. With the sign with AC, okay, that's going to be the up and down kind of voltage. Okay, you've got you can measure microfarads, which are those blue things on that board there. Don't worry about learning those. Current, you can measure the current. There's tricks to that though. You want to you want to get trained on that on how to measure the current. You have to break a circuit. And that's a whole nother uh, lesson. But I just want you guys to know how to work this thing primarily. Okay, and then you've got a, what's called an ohm meter here, which measures the amount of resistance. You might say, well, what, what do I need to know that for? Well, for the most part, unless you're kind of trained in electronics, you don't really need to know how to use it here. And they come in all different sizes. They got the little colored ones in your car. Sometimes, you know, oh man, my, my windows won't roll up now or something. And you look on your little chart for your car and it'll say, okay, it's fuse, uh, 20 amp fuse number 18 or something. And you pull that little sucker out and you can take your little multimeter, okay, and you can set your multimeter up on, to do a tone, you can set it on a short here and you'll be able to tell if it's working or not, if it's a good, good fuse or not. You'll put them, to, you can touch your leads together. And if you can measure across, you can check a bat for a bad fuse with one of these. So, Grant's got one of these in the garage, and you found it, and you're, you can use it. Okay. So, could you get like diminished? <laughs> you needed that one. Um, <laughs> could you have some diminished? Uh, you know, if your needle go, doesn't go up, it's not deflected as much, and could it be that the fuse is parsed kind of, kind of bad? Nah, fuses either pop open or they're or they're closed. Ooh, okay. whoa, ooh, look at the well. Sometimes you can see in there that it's bad, and sometimes you can't. Okay, 
Sometimes you can look, you can hold it up to the light, and you don't, and you see the little, the little line of uh, wire in there. And if you tell, you can tell whether or not it's, it's, there you if go. it's broken open, you can see it. But sometimes, short the leads together, you've got to line it up so that the needle is covered by the reflection off the silver that you see going around there and right around zero. You adjust it right to there on zero like that. So I can measure any kind of resistance around 100 ohms. Okay, which is... Here you go, Bob. There's, there's a couple of them. Take a look. Put your red lead, put your meter on DC. You can use either one you want. You can use one of those. One volt, huh? Check this guy out. Check it out with this one here. Adjust this guy to DC. And then you gotta move this, if you ever measure current, you gotta move this over to there. I don't, I don't want you messing with current. Three, go. Now you know what? The uh, analog meters were, were antique. Oh, they're moving. Oh, it's working. It's working very little. What do you got there? Out of you're volt. At the 10 volt range, you're only getting like a couple of volts. You're not even getting one. Drop it down a range, you get a little more accurate reading. Then you gotta consider you're looking at the top one. So we're at 2.5. This one ends at 250. So we can do the decimal thing in our head. And we got right around, if she can hold it steady for a second, it's about. It's about a volt on that one. Yeah, look at that. She really got some. No. There you go. It jumped up there. So we're about one point, looks like about 1.9 volts on that thing, or 1.4 and a half or something like that. Not bad for See just that. <laughs> See how much you get with the lights, you know. Now I'll take a digital meter, <laughs> one of these guys, put it on DC. Uh, Let's see, put this one on DC. This one? Yeah, this guy here. You got, you got these leads here. Oh, wrong one. This one will be able to clip on. These kind are handy. So you put the red one on the red and the black one on the black. Okay. You clip it on. You got to put you push in on the back of it here. These are this is just a little clip like that. You can stick it in there like that. Wow. You see that? <laughs> uh, it's kind of like putting a, a needle in the hole in the uh, a thread Threading needle. Threading a needle. Or uh, putting your your fishing lure on your. Uh, That's a pretty line. sweet little uh, gripper deal, though. So those little grippers are kind of handy. Okay, she's got that now. You, now she wants to set it on uh, DC. That's, that that's, that's 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 amperage. There, A is for amps. You want to turn it on. Now voltage is DC. If you want to check batteries and stuff, we're going to switch it over to the line with the three dashes on it. Okay, right to there. Now we're starting to see some readings. Now you've got about 1.3 volts coming in on that that solar panel. Okay, we saw Daisy chain the batteries. Daisy chain these batteries. This is the way it is in my car. I've got an escape out there. It's a hybrid. I got 300 volts. 27 volts. That's 20, about 23 because I gave him the battery that's no good here. Oh. But that's the demo that you would still got voltage and it'll still add, it'll still accumulate, okay? So if I needed 20, <laughs> 23 volts and I had one bad battery, I could still use it, okay? So they daisy chain together. You see that? So batteries add up in series, positive to negative, positive to negative, and you can get more voltage out of them. And wow. I've seen guys... Daisy chain these guys. You can YouTube videos where kids have taken boxes of these 9 volt batteries and get 110 volts in the light of the light bulb. If we take and we twist these two guys together here, and if uh, if we can get them to stay together, I've done this too many times, I might have to strip them down a little more. And Gerald wanted to measure these two guys. Now, what do we got? Click on the black. Oh, that's squee. Squee, I mean. Nice. Grant, I keep getting my squee, my friend squee. Look at that, okay. Now we're up to two and a half volts, almost three volts. Mm -hmm. nice. That's how they're getting 110 volts of electricity over there. 
off of those solar panels. They got a whole Excuse slew me. of these things. They changed the together. One. What are we gonna? Where should we see now? About about four and a half. A little more than that. Maybe yeah, up yeah. to 4.7. Mm -hmm. Three of them daisy chain, and then the cloud came in. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. It went down. Mm -hmm. See how that works? If you hold it over the window and you got more light, it'd probably to jump up to, if we carried this over there, we'd probably jump up to see, what we've seen two right here. <laughs> we know our outlets are 110 volts AC. You can come over to your outlet, okay? Oh, An alternating current doesn't care whether it's the red or the black, okay? So you can come over to your alt, to your uh, thing. Here, I'll put this up so John can tape it, okay? And you can carefully go to your outlet, and you can stick your leads into your outlet. Right on left. And you will see that you got your 110. This has got 120 volts because this thing reads AC in what's called RMS, okay? I'm not going to go into the map.